Hello and welcome to my channel. I've made this video in response to several requests from other woodworkers wanting to know how I make this hinge that you see on this box right here. You can see how when it's closed at the back here, this is the back side and the hinge is in plain sight here. It's almost impossible to see it. Uh, but once it's opened, you can see how it works. So nice. Really sets the box apart as a unique gift or against its competition on the market as well. Really, really nice little uh, feature there. And completely disappears. I first learned about this style of hinge about four years ago here on YouTube on Rob Cosman's channel. I just did a search for wooden hinges. This one came up, looked a bit complicated, but I pressed in after several failed attempts and a lot of trial and error. I sort of developed my own way of doing this hinge based on my experiences with it and the tools that I have in my shop. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. It's my first one, so thanks for your patience. And comment with any questions or comments that you have and subscribe to receive notifications on any future videos I release. Uh, so we'll get started and thanks in advance for watching. Right now in the process, <clears throat> excuse me, I've made a box. And this is a standard box. This is just miters. This is nothing fancy, a little bit of some keys for uh, structural integrity and uh, for accent, of course, they're done in the, the opposing wood. Uh, <clears throat> the stripes are there uh, for accent and to stabilize the lid. It's just a normal box. This is kind of what I do. This is one that I offer on my Etsy store. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I have is, is my dowel here. Um, the dowel is made of the same wood that the box is. And unless you're going to want to do a contrast, that's what you're going to need to do. Now, also, uh, we may need to zoom in on this, but you can see that I have the dowel marked. Uh, this, the reason for this is because the next step in this process, now that we've carefully made this dowel, is to cut it to bits. And we're literally going to hack it into seven pieces of equal length. Uh, this line helps us reorient it back so that the grain flows smoothly and we get a good blend on the, the hinge, the part that's visible when the box closes. That's the next step. We're going to take this now and take it to the table saw and we are going to hack it to bits. What we're going to do, I had to find a way to stay organized with this, with this process so that this goes back together like it comes apart. And so one of the things I did, I just made a simple little thing, uh, just a, something to hold this in, kind of like a Scrabble piece holder. Uh, we look here, you can see I even have the maths worked out so I don't forget. We're doing seven pieces at inch and three quarters, makes us 12 and a quarter because all my boxes are one foot, unless I'm making something custom. The pieces will sit in here as I cut them and I'll keep them in order. I'm going to start cutting this into pieces. All right, so let's get this thing cut. Process. After we have cut the dowel into seven equal pieces at just over an inch and three quarter each, we're going to be loading them into the chuck. We're going to be drilling the center out in with a one eighth inch drill bit. I have this set to a depth of one inch because I'm going to be drilling most of the pieces from both sides to avoid as much bit drift as we possibly can through the center of the dowels. Since we're going only, since we're drilling both ends, we only go just past halfway. Don't try to go any deeper so that we can maintain precision. On the ends, we are only drilling out one side. So we'll load the end piece here. I need to plug my lead in. And now, 
You just gotta turn this guy on. We're gonna bring up check first. We're gonna come in, pop this down. And I like to go really slow to let it find center, true center. And then just let it go nice and slow from there. Back it out through the chips. Get us a little bit more. Okay. So we're gonna bury this bit in there once we've let it find center nice and easy. We'll continue to go back out. This is the tedious part of the process here. Keeping the chips clear from the bit. It's only hot when you touch it. Drill that out as far as we can reach. And we're back there. And we're done with the first segment. Move this up, pull this away, turn it off, slow it down. Now that's our first one done because we're only doing one side of that. You see it's dead center there. So we put it back in its place in the holder and I pull out the next segment. Unload it. Turn this on. Throw the chips. Bring it up. Lock it down. And we're real slow to find center. So we release this from here, and now what we've got is this. We've got it drilled from both ends. So now what I want to do is just clean that out all the way. Make sure I can see through it, and I can. So there we go. We'll just continue the process through the rest of those segments. Now that I've got it all cut to pieces, we've drilled out. The segments in between the ends from both sides also drilled out with a bit on a drill same size eighth inch all the way through just to clear any debris or any chips that are left inside and the next step is to thread these over a bronze rod so you can use aluminum if you want i use these right here these are made by hobart i get them at Tractor Supply here locally where I live. They are the eighth inch bare bronze rod. The coated, the steel coated bronze rod is a few thousandths thicker and is a real pain to get these on there. You can use that if you want. I prefer just the bronze rod. This is where my process differs from Rob Cosman's. Rob Cosman's process drills a small shallow hole in the end of each segment where small segments of rod are put in place. Mine puts a rod through the entire length of each segment except for the ends and I go much deeper into the ends than Rob recommends on his technique. I came up with this way. Uh, it's a lot stronger and uh, it also makes it easier to hold the hinge together during the glue up process. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this dowel. And we can see we just align that there. And we are starting the reassembly process. Now these, these are lining up very good here. I will say, and tell you right now, that sometimes, quite often actually, they don't line up perfectly. And that's okay. Uh, this will depend on a little bit. I tend to make my smooth dowels a few thousandths smoother than this one does. Here we go. Fortunately, I still can make these a little large so that I've got some room to stand smooth after this step. Make everything very, very round. But sometimes if you're a little bit off center when you're drilling these on one side or another, when they meet up, it's not 100%. It's hard to fit them with chance to do this. Another way you can do this, if you um, need some help with chance to you can Easy to get these on. It's just hard to do this, to do it that way. So, you can do these two like this. Sometimes I see 
friends with that. There's nothing wrong with that, honestly. Not like it's a little bit off. Excuse me, excuse me. Okay, but I'm not worried about that. Because once we get this clamp in, that's going to fall right out of me. You see, now you've got all the black in, and of course you can't put that over there. As long as you do this a little bit long, and then I'll cut it to size. Get that size on there. Make sure you got enough to get your thimble. Right there in the hollow. And then just a little nip with that finger again. Clamping it in, and that'll pull it straight. Perfect. So what, I've, what I do here with this is I just need to know about how deep this is in here. And then right about that deep. Again, a bit of hand strength is going to be required to do this. You may have to use a different tool. Just give it just enough. You want to fill as much as you can. And then... Find our lines and cap it. You can hear that sink home really good. And there's our dowel. Reassembled, nice and crooked. Then what I like to do, of course, make sure that we've got enough. And we do. Got enough plenty actually sticking out both ends. And I like to clamp these up. And the reason I do this with the marks inward so that I don't lose my marking. So I do this and then I just sand this smooth. And that's the next step. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the setup I use to cut the, the trench in the back of the box at the bottom and the top that accommodate the dowel. Uh, if this is a half inch um, bull nose round in, I'll put a link in the description uh, for where you can get one of these on Amazon most likely. Um, it's just a white sud, half inch round. Um, the ratio that it is set into here is a trial and error thing that I have found. Uh, my router table is marked to where this is. Um, the, the deeper this goes into the box, the less the hinge opens. And there's a delicate balance to get it to open to just past 90 degrees and stop. This is a stop hinge. So if you go, if you, you know, if this is too far out or, or rather too far in, then the hinge will open too far and it will gap out. Um, this is an early attempt well, an early success. It was, it was successful. Um, not as successful as I would have wanted it to be. But uh, this is just pine with a pine dough. And this is one of my first uh, renditions of this years ago. And you can see it works. And it, it works as it should. But when opened, you see I, I went a little bit too far. It leans a little too far out. And we see the gaps here. Um, and this is what happens when this depth of this isn't seated far enough that way into the back of the box. And so what this setup is to do is to cut this trench up here and this trench down here. And that is what we're about to do. First thing I want to do is I know that I'm, I'm cutting trenches for a half inch dowel. So roughly, uh, we're going to be making a, it's going to be a quarter inch high. And then we want it a little lower than that because we want to leave a tiny bit of gap at the back of this for when the wood moves and it does this. Because if it does this, it'll still touch at the front. But if the lid moves in this direction and we didn't leave any gap at the back, then it will gap at the front when it closes. And so we want to leave a little bit of gap at the back usually no more than a 30 second of an inch visually almost not there but we want to leave a little bit of gap back there so that if the lid does curl up a little bit it will still touch in the front um, when it closes so what i do is i get a couple pieces of quarter inch and i make sure that we're not quite at quarter inch so it's not quite there now what i'm going to do i've got some scrap I'm going to do the run here and then here, and then I'm going to fit those together and we're going to see where we're at.
Okay, so now that we've got our bit to the right height, we've used our scrap to test that. It's actually a little bit away from where it needs to be. So now that it's there, I'm gonna cut those grooves in the back that I've marked here. You can see I've marked the back, the top and the bottom of the back, because it's very easy to get confused with the symmetry of my boxes being the same on the front and the back. So I mark them so that I don't cut a groove in the front and I've got it close. So what I'll do is I'll cut both of these very slowly and then I will probably bump the bit up just a fraction of a tiny bit and do a final pass uh, either top and bottom or one of the two. ourselves a little bit of height then if we go too far we can always sand this off a little bit and look at that just the shave of space okay so the next step we're doing a bit of a dry assembly you can see here where we are at we are flushing these sides precisely so we're putting this where it's going to go so clamp this into place to bite down on that dowel and hold it straight and steady. I've got my mark where I can see it. And so then with a clamp, I want to capture that dowel just like that. I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to use this like this for the steps that follow the step that I'm doing now. And I want to get a pen. And what I want to do here is I want to transfer where these are divided to the bottom and the top of the box itself, the body of the box, just like this. Right on those lines. So I wanna know where each segment sits without the segments being here because they have to be temporarily taken out while I'm gluing and waxing. So I wax here. Then I wax every other one, top to bottom. No need to mark the glue sides with a G because obvious reasons. So this is our wax pattern. We'll wax up in here, glue here. We'll wax in here, glue up in here. On to the next uh, step, what we do is I, I set this here. I release the vertical pressure. I lift up here, out, take this down. And again, I leave this like this so that when I've got the glue on there, I can go in here like this, pick it up with a, a torsional pressure and then lay it down back where it was and clamp it in place. So really important that this doesn't move after we capture it. So we set that aside safe and flip this guy over. And now what I'm going to do, since the next step is to apply the wax, I'm going to mask off where the glue's going to go. 
So I'll see you when that's done. So the next thing we're gonna do, I've got this masked off. These are our segments where the wax goes. We've marked that here. And the best thing I've found to apply wax into those half round, half inch grooves is a piece of half inch towel. Ironically enough, this is the same type of wood there. So I just scrape a little bit on there. I use the ends as sort of a palette to Bob Ross these into uh, these little clumps of wax into something that's a little bit easier to use. So I get it like that and then just swipe that down in there like that. It's a bit of a finesse piece to get them in there just so. But you want to make sure you got good thick coverage of that and that's how they do. I want to be clear, you do not have to mask this. If you can control this and create a ledge like that, that's all you really need to do. I prefer to mask. Once we have it in there, we can remove these. And if we zoom in on, especially right here, where my fingertip is, we zoom way in on that. You can see that that, is, that does have some thickness to it. We'll be applying glue in these. And as the glue squishes in and spreads out, it will generally stop at that point and start squeezing out the front and the inside as well. So we have to remember that even a little bit of glue is very strong. So the next step that we do is we just take some of our mushed up wax, finger it. And what I like to do, because we're going to get squeeze out, on the inside, so I want to treat this little edge right here. And there we go. A little bit of glue, especially wood glue on the wood, goes a long way. Now, I put the glue in the places where it goes. I've got it here in case I need more. I use a silicone tip, not a brush, but I guess it's called that. It's really just a soft rubber spreader, um, and it's small. And I just spread this. On the end, I go all the way up to the end because I want that at the end there to be sealed. I go all the way to the outside edge with the spreading of the glue, but I do not push it up. I want as little squeeze out on the inside as I can get. Also, 
So now that looks good to me based on what I've seen in the past and what works. So now we take this and we'll put it on that hanging over the edge. We take this that we've kept in this orientation and we line it up with our lines that we made that match our segments. And we pull it up into there. We twist to lift, walk it over, and set it down, matching the lines. We pull it off the front. I have to be very careful now. It's okay, and we see, come around here, we see where I was talking about the squeeze out, the glue going to the very edge, but going no further, and that's exactly what we're looking for, looking for perfect glue containment, and we got squeeze out, so we know we got plenty of glue in there, and we just put about three clamps on, we space them. And now we wait. Okay, so we've had time for the glue to dry on this hinge. So we'll see how it went. Take this off first. Bring this up. tight cap at the back, but fully functional, mostly aligned, and those slight alignment imperfections we sand out in the end to flush everything out. Simple little box playing here. I'll change direction on that. Good old Paduke. Paint you red. So what do you think of that? Looks like it's gone. Did the final sanding, smoothed everything out, flushed out the edges uh, where it uh, pulled just slightly out of alignment by a few thousands. And uh, so now we have this. and went inside and cleaned up any squeeze out that we get on the inside. We got a nice clean closure. And there'll be some more sanding done with finish. And we are also gonna be doing some more work to this box. But that's it for this video. Next video, we're gonna be putting one of my flush mount latches right there on the front for this customer. He wanted a bit of contrast on his closure latch. So, thanks for watching.